Negative $50? But I need scratch tickets today! How else am I gonna buy more scratch tickets? All right, think, 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 think. How can I make money fast? All right, you, you young-ish, you, you got some decent knees on a good day, you got the camera on and you're filming a show as we speak, you have zero empathy, maybe some kind of a murder thing. Uh, you know, there's gotta be a country where murder is legal, but crap, I do have empathy, damn! I keep forgetting that for some reason. Okay, come on, brain, all right, juice me, juice me hard. Juice me up, brain, ha <laughs> ha! I got it. I use this camera that's on to make a video since we're already doing that. A video you can't resist. Something with sex and danger and movies. What combines movies with news and sex? Lots of sex. Slops of sex. You know what, baby. Into the Ben Shapiro verse, part one. The Barbie Wars, Episode 4, Redemption of the Dragon Sphere 2, 4. Heck yes! Oh, it's been too long, Ben! Time for some low-hanging fruit, the tastiest of fruits. Like succulent elder testicles unfurling from the loose leg sleeve of a gym short they are. Gross. But also profitable. We'll even make it two parts long, like that elder's long, long balls. Okay, so here's some epic news. I don't know if you know this, and in fact, I hope you don't because it means that you live a healthy life, but the conservative political news organization, The Daily Wire, is making original and apolitical content now. Movies, TV shows, you know this stuff, make-believe, flim-flam. It's a real funded by a fracking billionaire to riches story for them. Because since their humble fracking beginnings, The Daily Wire has grown to making a reported $200 million in revenue with, according to them, 1 million subscribers as of 2022. That number is probably right. Honestly, it's lower than I assumed and is probably higher now. As of this year, The Daily Wire is the seventh largest publisher for podcasts in the United States of America. In 2020, they moved to a subscription-based model in an attempt to establish themselves as a sort of right-wing version of Netflix. Because, you see... Movies are woke, all right? And actually, they're so woke that they're way too woke. Did you know that? Did you know that mainstream movies are so woke and the media is woke and full of woke lies about woke stuff and women just need to like, but out, honestly. And so what you gotta do, you see, is you gotta get all your news and your media from just a handful of non-woke guys. In fact, what if they're anti-woke? Yeah, that's the place to be. Not because it's a grift or a way to trap you into an ideological bubble, but because everyone and every product is woke, except them. Gillette razors used to be the best a man could get. Then they decided that men are too toxic. Unless you're the kind of man who teaches his daughter to shave her beard. If that makes sense to you, keep buying Gillette. But if you've had enough of the woke bullshit and you're tired of paying companies like Harry's and Gillette to hate you. Ah! Then buy my new razor instead. That's an ad for The Daily Wire's own Jeremy's Razors. And did it seem oddly paced to anyone else? Like when he says, keep buying Gillette, and we get this weird silence as the camera pushes in on the kid shaving, which we already saw and didn't need an extra beat on. There's no music either. This ad clearly has a big budget, but they're trying to do this snappy walk and talk thing, like one of those fast paced Old Spice commercials from, you know, 15 years ago, or those Dollar Shave Club commercials from like, 12 years ago. The guy's doing a bunch of quote unquote random and quote unquote awesome CEO things, and we're supposed to be zipping through each of them. But it feels like they don't quite understand how to do that in the edit, and so every transition takes slightly too long. It's a four minute ad that has like 30 seconds of information in it. And I've already forgotten why we wanted to show it to you in the first place. Was it because the non-woke razors have gotten a ton of really bad reviews? No. But they have. Bad reviews from, one assumes, Daily Wire fans who wanted to support the Daily Wire by buying a quality, non-woke razor. The most common complaints seem to be that they break easily and are dull right out of the box, which kind of makes them already broken. But no, 
This was all just so you could meet Jeremy Boring, also doll out of the box, who is in fact, quote, the God King and CEO of The Daily Wire. Oh, hi, I'm Jeremy Boring, CEO and God King of The Daily Wire. So cool. And while we put Ben's name in the title, for sex appeal, obviously, we're probably going to spend a lot of time on this super boring fellow, considering that you probably don't know who he is. But it turns out that J-Bor is not only responsible for a small collection of poorly reviewed anti-woke products, and they are all very poorly reviewed, but he's also the guy behind the current push from THE Daily Wire to make original content focused on entertainment, and who knows, maybe even art content that coincidentally features a lot of bitter and coincidentally explicitly conservative actors and comedians. There's of course Gina Carano, who starred in the, according to some right-winger reviews, woke Daily Wire movie Terror on the Prairie. You may recall that she was fired from The Mandalorian after a series of bizarre social media posts about how hating conservatives is like hating Jews during the Holocaust or something. Anyway, Gina refused to bow down to the woke mob and stood her ground and doesn't regret anything and is happy over the Daily Wire, but also is suing Lucasfilm specifically to force them to write her back into the show that she doesn't need and doesn't miss, but desperately wants to be back on by law. Everyone clap by law. Meanwhile, Daily Wire is also making an adult animated series called Mr. Burcham that stars such comedic icons as Adam Carolla, Roseanne Barr, and says here Megan Kelly and Candace Owens. Wow. Can I get a taste? Don't do anything stupid! Earth than last year! Oof! Bad taste. That is... Not great line delivery. But that's okay. It's not her fault. She's not an actress. They shouldn't have put her in this. It's a political and news organization made up of political pundits. So, of course, the show is about a quote, no nonsense shop teacher trying to survive in an overly PC world. The big boast or draw is, of course, that it's anti woke. And, okay. Yeah, sure. Cool. All right. It 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 looks it, it it looks just so very okay. You ever see a vegan wolf on the Nature Channel? I'm a vegan. <laughs> Neat joke that Futurama made a better version of 24 years ago. Turns out the Corolla has been trying to make this show since 2011, a year after that first Old Spice commercial and a year before that first Dollar Shave Club commercial. And it turns out in 2011, nobody would touch it. Probably because it's bad, but I don't know, I haven't seen it. According to Boring, Adam Carolla created Burcham back before Barack Obama killed comedy. Of course, Hollywood wouldn't make Burcham today because they've stopped making comedies altogether for fear of offending the wrong people. So we realized we had to do it. First of all, they've stopped making comedies altogether? What? Anyway, get ready to laugh with the comedic stylings of Megyn Kelly reciting jokes that haven't been updated in a decade. Lots of entertainment on the horizon, actually. Jeremy Boring has himself written a non-woke adaptation of Snow White that The Daily Wire will soon produce. He's also going to write and direct an upcoming series based on a book called The Pendragon Cycle, which I'm sure will be thrilling and anti-woke. And of course, the big meaty sports comedy that is Lady Ball! You know, the film about a group of men pretending to be trans women to win at basketball. It's sort of, it's their big flagship comedy that Boring not only wrote and directed, but also stars in, along with a bunch of other Daily Wire personalities, as generous, but personalities. On top of all of this, The Daily Wire is investing $100 million in children's programming with a spinoff called Bent Key. And this is all, supposedly, in the name of making non-political shows. To quote Jeremy directly, our entertainment content won't be overtly political, but it will reflect our values. Our mission is simple. We will make great entertainment that all Americans can enjoy, regardless of their political views. If you're fed up with the cultural edicts of our country's self-appointed moral overlords in Hollywood and legacy media, stay tuned. Of course, 
based on their upcoming projects. It sounds more like he means that Jeremy Boring will make great entertainment that all Americans can enjoy. That's interesting. But remember that quote. It's the stated motivation for why The Daily Wire is making original content. Hollywood and big media companies and all movies and TV are obsessed with an overly moralizing agenda. And so The Daily Wire is aiming to make non-political and non-moralizing content that any American can enjoy. We're not gonna get too bogged down with the premise that Hollywood is woke, mainly because we did a whole episode about that, but to meet them on their terms. I think the criticism can be distilled down to the idea that movies, and more specifically, mainstream movies, should be considered a form of light entertainment with the primary goal of distracting broad audiences from their troubles. And by injecting any political messages into films, regardless of the lean, Hollywood is failing to deliver on that promise. And to an extent, I understand this. A film like Transformers probably shouldn't have some profound message about Palestine. Families don't watch the Minions films to hear about the next election. I mean, I'd argue that these types of films aren't actually doing that, but sure. In a vacuum, I tend to agree that mainstream entertainment shouldn't have niche messages in them if it compromises the stories that they want to tell. That's the key argument, right? That these stories are suffering because of these messages. Bob Iger agrees! And so the Daily Wire is claiming that this is exactly their goal. To let films be films! Putting story and entertainment first and not getting bogged down with convoluted or obviously partisan messages. No politics! And now that I've made a big show of setting that up, can we get a few clips from Lady Ballers? You can't tell a bunch of teenage boys not to steal. Yes, you can, Gary. It's one of the most important things you should be teaching them. It's literally in the Bible. This is the fourth time, Mr. Goodson. What's that? This is the fourth time. It's the obedience trap, lady. I can't hear anything through it. This is the fourth time. Our history teacher led us in a moment of silence for all the workers exploited by the capitalistic system. You should ask your history teacher which side people ran to when the Berlin Wall fell. That's from literally the first 10 minutes of the movie that, unlike Hollywood, isn't bogged down with politics or overtly moralizing, and instead tells the story about how the Bible is good and right and socialism is bad and the trans people are sick. A totally non-political movie that almost exclusively stars right-wing podcasters, pundits, and in one case, a literal politician. Excuse me. Are these seats open? <laughs> ne never mind. Told you we should have sprung for the box seat. Hey! What's the joke there? Was, was there a joke? What was that? What was all of that? The lady glared at him and then he said he should have gotten box seats and then the scene ends? Why would they do that? You had Ted Cruz, America's rash, and you didn't do anything with him. Have him say he should have gone to Cancun. Lean into it, have fun, how boring. But listen, we're not gonna talk about how incredibly bad Lady Ballers is. We're gonna do that in part two. Like, that's gonna be the entire second video to this. But right now, I just wanted to highlight how brazenly silly it is for Jeremy Boring to pretend like he's making non-political content. Matt Walsh, who, geez, is also in Lady Ballers, even called them conservative media in his tweet about how actors were apparently too scared to be in this very, very bad, embarrassing film. I guess no one told him to pretend this was non-political. And look, we're not gonna spend a lot of time convincing you that these Clearly political things are in fact political. But what might surprise you is that some of their content is in fact non-political at first glance, specifically their children's content, such as Chip Chilla, which tends to focus on basic moral lessons for kids. When they do talk about politics, it's fairly harmless, like this episode where the kids are president for a day by wearing a wig. Well, I have a new rule. I get to have the wig longer. <laughs> what? No fair. Don't worry. I just want to make sure you all stay as happy as you are right now. Hey, great point about how presidents shouldn't be dictators. Seems like a lesson a few people need to hear. Unrelated fact, the dad is voiced by Trump and RFK supporter Rob Schneider. I don't know, 
Pretty funny that even conservative-led children's shows teach morals that adult conservatives don't seem to learn. And of course, it would be naive to say that Chip Chilla doesn't have any political leaning when you stand back and look at what the show does and doesn't do. The show is commonly accepted as a conservative ripoff of Bluey, a children's cartoon from Australia. It's not hard to see why, when the animation and general premise are basically the same. They're both about a family of gross animals that go on role-playing adventures to learn or whatever. Who gives a shit? And even Chip Chilla's theme song sounds vaguely like Bluey's. They really are quite similar. Of course, the Daily Wire denies this, their reasoning being that Chip Chilla can't be a quote, conservative ripoff of Bluey because Bluey is already conservative. You see, it's not a conservative ripoff, just a normal ripoff. But whether or not they were trying to copy Bluey, which they probably were, I mean, here's the original art style, why did they change it to be closer to Bluey? This is all to say that the one actual difference between the shows is pretty telling. Specifically, that in Bluey, the mom has a job and also likes to play hockey, while the dad often stays at home with the kids, otherwise known as communism. As you can already guess, in Chip Chilla, the father is the singular breadwinner and the mom cooks and cleans. Which is all to say that The Daily Wire looked at Bluey, a show they apparently considered to be conservative, and decided that it still wasn't conservative enough, and made the exact same show but with a few anti-woke tweaks. A show that, by the way, is apparently kind of bad. Despite not being overtly political, Chip Chilla is poorly reviewed for being a generally boring kids show. Not harmful, just bland. Like having sex with oatmeal, or I guess, eating oatmeal if you're depraved like that. But of course, all of the Daily Wire's endeavors are popularly regarded as bad and derivative. As we just said, Chip Chilla is very obviously a bluey ripoff. And then Lady Ballers, the film that Hollywood is too scared to make, was already made several times by Hollywood. Even that Razor ad I showed is, as I mentioned, trying to pull their tone from Old Spice and Dollar Shave Club ads. Run, hide, fight, tear on the prairie. We've made so many of these Death Wish style home invasion films that it's hard to keep track. Oh, is your Adam Carolla show about a funny conservative guy who doesn't understand this liberal world and his geeky quote, gaming streamer son? Yeah, it's called American Dad. It's been on since 2005, and many of their writers are funnier and prettier than your writers. They're just they're adding nothing to the zeitgeist. And by they, I specifically mean the Daily Wire. Because I'd argue that, unlike our video about comedy, modern conservatives can make movies and TV shows. Adam Sandler, John Voight, Gary Sinise, Chris Pratt, Vince Vaughn, these are all conservative-leaning talents who have done very good work. Clint Eastwood is an incredible director and also a right-wing wacko who talks to chairs. Heck, there are movies that I'm not even sure were made by conservatives that have extremely conservative messages. Most comedies about an accidental pregnancy hinge on the main character refusing to get an abortion despite being unequipped for parenthood. Those two movies are both from 2007 for some reason. I guess we were really into that. Or remember when Pixar made several films about how the powerful and strong are being held back by the mediocre need for equality? Or when the first Kingsman movie told us that the Democrats were teaming up with the rich elite to take over the world, at least until they explode Obama's head at the end? So no, this is not a video about how conservatives can't make movies. They can, and many of them are really good at it. This is actually a video about how Ben Shapiro and Jeremy Boring and The Daily Wire specifically can't make good movies. Because why not? We like having fun here. We're also going to investigate why they're even trying and why this matters at all. In fact, after the break, we're gonna dig into just that. And also, uh, we're, gonna, we're gonna tell you how you can double your brain power for just $50 or some garbage. Stay tuned. Oh God, it's you. I knew you'd find me eventually. Well, I'm here, you win, 
Your prize? To hear about Ground News, a sponsor that we specifically sought out to do ads for. See, they're a news aggregate site that shows how the media around the world is covering any single story and context, like their political lean and parent companies, so you can compare and contrast. That includes the Daily Wire. So to look at, say, this story coming out of Gaza, from the 250 articles listed, you see a variety of very different headlines, downplaying deaths or talking about the food getting dropped in. But here's the Daily Wire's take. <clears throat> Ben Shapiro slams Biden for considering Palestinian Authority to run Gaza. Hmm, glad they got the scoop on what Ben Shapiro, owner of the Daily Wire, thinks about a thing. Really getting to the heart of the story. But you can read that and more, please read more than that, on ground.news smn, which now has a brand new elections page for all your 2024 election needs. That includes blind spot election stories that aren't being covered by certain left or right leaning news outlets. So check them out at ground.news slash SMN. You can subscribe for as little as $1 a month or get 30% off unlimited access through our link this month only. What they're doing is more important today than ever and I encourage you to check them out. The link is in the description. description. Hey there, squishy. You like selling stuff? I do. I sell lots of stuff. Nitrous canisters, phone cards, honestly, anything that you can shove into a hollowed out Bible. And if you have a budding small business that's definitely legal, perhaps you'll want to check out Shopify and their point of sale system. They have everything you need for both your online and in-person retail store. They are your command center for tracking inventory or accepting payments. Anything from cash or credit cards or homemade wine or favors or just, you know, whatever. Anything at all. And because of this, they make it easy to unite your digital and physical store under one roof. You can track all your sales across your whole business from this one place. Wow. Wow. Works on any device, of course. And with their award-winning help team, they can support whatever your business needs. So take your business to the next level level and check out Shopify. They even have plug and play tools that let you create marketing campaigns for social media. I tattoo my phone number on pigeons, but Twitter probably works just as well. So sign up for a $1 per month trial period at shopify.com slash more news, all lowercase. Go to shopify.com slash more news to take your retail business to the next level today. Shopify.com slash more news. Do retail right with Shopify. Do banks have guards still? You never see guards these days. Ah, neat, you're back, we're back. Did you like those ads? Please use the promo codes in those ads. Also, it was cocaine. The thing that doubles your brain power is cocaine. I told you, therefore, you owe me $50 by law. That's a legal agreement. Anywho, hi. We were talking about how Ben Shapiro and The Daily Wire have decided to create an alternate, non-woke version of Hollywood. And at this point, you might be asking why they even care at all. Well, I can actually let Ben Shapiro answer that. Quote, my mentor, Andrew Breitbart, always said politics is downstream of culture. What he meant by this is that more people are shaped by the culture that surrounds them than by politics directly. We consume movies and TV shows. We get together and discuss the latest in sports. We join in churches and at universities and at restaurants to discuss our lives. We swim in a sea of culture. In large part, we're defined by the culture in which we swim. It's a cool metaphor about how culture is like a sea, but also politics is downstream from it, I guess, which that's not how seas work, Ben. Rivers, rivers don't flow away from seas, Ben. But sure, but also, can politics influence culture too? 
Why is it a stream at all? Seems like they're bad at words. But what Breitbart said, and what Ben was trying to say, is that people's politics are often dictated by the morals in movies and TV and music and art and culture they absorb. And that's not entirely wrong. Of course, as I already pointed out, there are already plenty of conservatives making movies and TV, but whatever. If you're someone like Ben, who believes he is losing this so-called culture war, it makes sense to spin off his own entertainment company. It also explains why the Daily Wire seems obsessed with, let's say, parodying the aesthetic of mainstream culture. I mean, our pop culture, all of our movies, our social media, they are all run by progressive mentalities. It's obnoxious. So we've decided to change that. Like, we deserve better. We deserve content that is irreverent and fun, but without leftism, you know, being shoved down our throat. So this show was born. I'm Brett Cooper, and this is the comment section. You might be familiar with Brett Cooper, or not. I don't know you. I'm sure you're nice, though. I also don't really want to pick on Brett, because she's like 20 and could potentially turn her life around. But currently, she's the host of The Daily Wire's The Comments section with Brett Cooper, which is basically a repackaged teen version of Ben Shapiro's show. Her mission statement reflects the exact strategy Ben was talking about. And heck, who am I to argue with the spawn of America? After all, Brett appears to be just an everyday young woman making her scrappy YouTube slash streaming show from the comfort of her bedroom. I'm sorry, studio set. Her bedroom studio set. It's on a set. Like, they aren't even hiding that it's on a set made to look like the actress's bedroom. It's got producers and grips and probably an on-set dog. What are they called? Best boys? Best boys. And my goodness, that is the most cynical, transparent, executive-brained attempt to manufacture a youth grassroots movement I've ever seen. And I've seen everything Democrats do. Anyway, she's making some hard-hitting Gen Z content, like this video about protecting the home you definitely can afford to buy, and how Elon Musk is cool. And the Office remake is, unfortunately, woke. All the stuff the kids are into. What makes this particularly embarrassing is that they clearly don't understand or care to acknowledge what Twitch streamers actually do, and just distilled it into this aesthetic. She talks like she's talking to chat, but like, there's no chat. She's not doing anything, it's a set. They, they want to fight this so-called culture war, so they make a set that looks like a teen's bedroom, throw up the opposite of bisexual lighting, and tell you it's authentic. It's pretty insulting. And much like Lady Ballers or Chip Chilla, it all feels a little like a store brand copy of a more genuine product. And a lot of that comes from the fact that they don't have genuine people to do these things. Brett Cooper, is an actress. Yes, she's conservative and was apparently a huge fan of Ben Shapiro before she got the gig, but a lot of the stuff she's saying doesn't feel organic or natural to people her age. And so it all just kind of feels like when your school principal did a rap about how drugs are bad. Do we have a clip of that? Let's look at the stats. I've got the facts. My money like Liz, my pockets are fat. Homie, I'm epic. Don't be a whap. Dog, it's a yarmulke. Homie, no cap. I'm gonna stop you right there, Ben. So, I've seen conflicting opinions about the quality of the Ben Shapiro rap. Personally, I'm not a rap scholar. I don't have a fancy doctorate like Sir Mr. Dre. I do think that if you're going to get Ben Shapiro to rap, it's not funny or interesting or original to have a dorky white guy say stuff like homie or dog, you know, like another joke from 30 years ago. If you're getting Ben Shapiro to rap, have him use the language he uses when he speaks in rap form. Be clever, write the rhymes, do a good job. That's what I want to see. But I'm also guessing that no one deep into rap can especially relate to the lyrics, you defunded the police, now there's no one to protect you, or where the American flag's at. Those are, no diggity, some of the lyrics in this song. The main chorus repeatedly saying, quote, I don't care if I offend you. And like, don't worry. I honestly don't think you could offend anyone if you tried. Also, nobody defunded the police. You made that up. Anyway, cool rap song about how American cops are actually good by Tom McDonald, the guy who just moved here from Canada. See, the issue with trying to manufacture a culture is that it's manufactured. Things like 
rap artists and YouTube streamers get popular because they're on the fringes. Young people like to rebel, to feel like they're remaking the world as they go. You're not going to really wow them when you're some 40 year old millionaire rapping about how cops are good so that you can drive the culture war in favor of the even richer billionaires funding your news outlet. That shit is just very, very desperate. And also a number one hit, which we'll actually get to later. Of course, it would also be silly to assume that the only reason Ben Shapiro is making movies and doing cool rap songs is to win a culture war. If you recall our video from like 60 years ago, Ben Shapiro has one of the most transparent failed writer origin stories ever. So obvious that even Ben Shapiro wouldn't write it into a script. And that guy is terrible. He was born and raised in godless Los Angeles to parents who both worked in the woke Hollywood system. His mother was a TV executive for crying out loud. Which Ben did, because despite that Nepo baby start, he was completely unable to sell a TV pilot in his later years. Now, I can't legally say I've read the pilot, but for some magical reason, I can tell you that the pilot was not good. And that's okay. No one starts out as a good writer. Have you seen what babies write? It is absolute dog sh and usually, when your work gets rejected, it's wise to figure out why that happened and improve upon yourself. Ben went a different direction and wrote an entire book about how Hollywood was mean to him. To hear Ben tell it, he was blacklisted by Hollywood after a producer saw his conservative website. Perhaps they stumbled on the article he wrote about how ethnic cleansing is good, who knows? Point is, that Ben Shapiro isn't a bad writer, you see, but rather he was punished by woke Hollywood despite his talents. And while art is subjective, it also sometimes isn't. And so it is with extreme confidence that I can say that Ben Shapiro is a pretty bad writer. If you don't believe me, you can read his fictional novel about General Brett Hawthorne, a large bear of a man, saving America from a deadly border crisis. Hey Ben, isn't the New York Times liberal trash? Get their name off your precious non-woke book, Ben! Anyway, Ben's a bad writer, and that's okay. But what makes Ben, let's say, special is that despite having very little experience or positive feedback to his work, he seems to think he's an expert in cinema and storytelling. And because he so firmly believes in the importance of influencing the culture, Ben has spent a lot of time publicly critiquing popular media, often using this very authoritative language as if he's possessed by Roger Ebert. And ironically, in doing so, he has shown a profound inability to understand film and TV on a basic level. For the most part, his opinions are exactly as predictable, bland, and politically biased as you would expect. For those of you who can't wait that long, I'm gonna give my review of the Barbie movie in the most Oppenheimer fashion. What the f Run. I could make an entire video about Ben's terrible review of Barbie, but just to be clear, it's okay to not like a film, but not liking a film is different than critiquing it. And Ben really wants us to think that he's objectively judging movies for their craft, while coincidentally always hating films he thinks have left-leaning messages in them. I was trying to separate this into problems with plot and problems with character and problems with, with the politics of the film, but they're all intertwined because the thing is just a mess. It doesn't make any sense. I hate to tell you this, Ben, who is absolutely watching, thanks for that, but you absolutely can untangle the politics of the movie from the writing and story and filmmaking. I mean, you can't, but people can. The gist of Ben's review is him pointing out a series of jokes or plot points that he personally didn't like, often because he sees them as leftist. Anytime he tries to critique the film on a technical level, it becomes painfully obvious that he simply wasn't paying attention to it. You might imagine at this point that the way the film is gonna go is that Ken and Barbie are gonna have to some sort of agree about seeing each other as equal human beings. You might imagine that's where it's going wrong. That's not where the film is going to go. You might have thought that what you were going to get was Ken gets treated with respect as a person and Barbie gets treated with respect as a person. And that's a better, nope, wrong. In the end, not to skip ahead, Barbie Land just gets restored and the men are still subservient. That's the best, that's the best version of the world. Wow. That would be a huge problem if the film didn't pay off the Ken storyline and everything went back to how it was at the end. Do we have a clip from the end of Barbie? 
I don't think that things should go back to the way that they were. No Barbie or Ken should be living in the shadows. Right. They literally say we shouldn't go back to the way things were. No Barbie or Ken should be living in the shadows at the end of the film. I'm guessing Ben didn't catch that and was too busy furiously writing notes about how there's a black woman president. Who's the audience for this? At the reference points in this film, it references variously Marcel Proust. It references Robert Evans and the cinematography of The Godfather. It references 2001 A Space Odyssey. This is a movie made for moms and their seven-year-old girls. Right. So, Ben... A lot of kids' movies have references to older films for the parents who you keep mentioning are in the audience. Like, you know that. Are you absolutely furious when you watch Aladdin and the genie references Ed Sullivan, Peter Lorre, Arnold Schwarzenegger, Senor Wences, Walter Brennan, Groucho Marx, William F. Buckley Jr., Cab Calloway, Robert De Niro, Arsenio Hall, Jerry Lewis, Jack Nicholson, and Rodney Dangerfield? Are you so, so mad now, Ben? There's also an entire plot point in Barbie making fun of guys thinking women don't understand The Godfather, and that's why it's in the film. And it's pretty ironic, but not surprising, that the joke went over your head. Week one, this thing is going to clean up at the domestic box office. My prediction is going to just absolutely fall off a cliff after that. The repeat business on this movie is going to be non-existent. Sad trombone. He's just so predictably wrong about films to the point that you can guess, without looking, which movies he likes and which he doesn't. Barbie? The Batman? Terrible. Rise of Skywalker? Now that's cinema! embarrassing. And ultimately, it just comes down to his feelings based on his personal politics. He wants so badly to convince us that he's some sophisticated cultural critic, but his opinions are the same as every person who would buy an anti-woke razor or anti-woke chocolate. And that's because, much like a lot of conservatives right now, Ben Shapiro is obsessed with injecting politics into everything he comes in contact with. Again, I was trying to separate this into problems with plot and problems with character and problems with, with the politics of the film, but they're all intertwined because the thing is just a mess. It doesn't make any sense. It must be exhausting to watch movies like this. And what's fascinating is that his grievances are so clearly emotional and impetuous that he misses a lot of nuance. Like, Barbie isn't really the left-wing film he thinks it is. It has a lot of commentary about fake corporate wokeness and men being often overlooked by superficial feminism, stuff that conservatives often talk about. And Ben misses it all because he's so fuming that the Barbie movie dares to also have a disabled character or whatever. He did the same thing with Get Out, a film that criticizes the liberal-leaning tokenization of black people. Ben should love that message, but was too obsessed with the idea of white people being the villain that he seemingly missed it. He's so bogged down with his bias and grievances that he can't enjoy some of the best things that have been made because his politics simply won't let him. And also, by politics, I mean that he just gets upset if a gay or brown character exists. The biggest problem with the film is not the wokeness. Yes, there's some woke touches. You have Catwoman, who is a woman of color, who is, of course, good. And you have the black female mayor, who is good. And you have the black Jim Gordon, who, who is good. Yeah, great point about how it's woke when black people are good. I mean, a good Jim Gordon? How unlike Batman! And with all those bad white characters, like Alfred and Batman. But I don't think the problem is just that Ben is obsessed with identity politics and anti-woke grievance. It's actually funnier than that, much more rooted in Ben's personal creative frustrations. And I will reveal this to you after our second and final break, which you will have to unlock for just four payments of four dollars and let's say 50 cents. Just shove it in the front of your computer and I'm being told that money doesn't work like that. Well, fuck you, okay, fine. You get the final part of the episode for free, I guess. But you owe me. Hey, 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 it's Katie. Jeez, you know, I've been thinking about that new Dune movie a lot. It's really cut into my personal life. Grocery shopping, meal prepping. Who has the time when they're spending hours thinking about the Dune movie? But... Hungry Root can help get back that time. They deliver fresh groceries right to your door. And that means produce, meat, seafood, pantry stuff, healthy stuff, sweet stuff, whatever's 
stuff you want. Using a fun and short quiz, they customize their selection based on your lifestyle and kitchen appliances and even what level of spice you want. Spice is the most precious substance in the universe, after all. Listen, who amongst us hasn't sat in a dark room for hours, just, you know, quietly thinking about the recent adaptation of Frank Herbert's 1965 space epic? Well, Hungry Root will reclaim that time by saving hours of planning, shopping, and cooking, all with the best tasting and most trusted ingredients. I promise you, Hungry Root is great. I'm learning how to cook because of Hungry Root. I genuinely love it. And right now, Hungry Root is offering some more news listeners 40% off your first delivery and free veggies for life. And by life, I do mean just the life of your subscription, just in case that wasn't clear. Anywho, just go to HungryRoot.com slash more news to get 40% off your first delivery and get your free veggies. Ooh, I love me some free veggies. That's HungryRoot.com slash more news. Don't forget to use our link so they know we sent you. That's part of this arrangement. Hey Ben, thanks for watching so far. I know it's been rough for you. And you know, taking care of your health isn't always easy, but it should at least be simple. That's why for the last 40 Ben years, I've been drinking AG1. You know this Ben, you also do these ads. It's just one scoop mixed in water once a day, every day, and it makes me feel totally not woke, but also energized in the literal sense. That's because according to AG1, each serving of AG1 delivers my daily dose of vitamins, minerals, pre and probiotics, and more. It's a powerful, healthy habit that's also powerfully simple. And unlike Ben's ads for AG1, I'm gonna actually drink it. Why don't you drink it, Ben? Ah! Why don't you drink it? Why not? Do you see? It's so easy and delicious. What are you afraid of? You coward. Anyway, AG1 wants me to say that, quote, if there's one product I had to recommend to elevate your health, it's AG1, and that's why I've partnered with them for so long, end of quote. So if you want to take ownership of your health, start with AG1, try AG1, and get a free one-year supply of vitamin D3 plus K2 and five free AG1 travel packs with your first purchase exclusively at drinkag1.com slash more news. That's drinkag1.com slash more news. Check it out, Ben. Specifically. Listen, bud, we got a whale here, and all we gotta do is that good long squeeze on Anacott Steel, all right? I don't throw darts at a board. I bet on sure things. Read Sun Tzu, The Art of War. Every battle is won before it is ever fought. I just need you to explain to me, very simply, what stocks are. Is it the same as, like, like a soup broth? Well, you know, I didn't think so, but I did want to check. Okay, hi, it's that thing again where I notice you doing some money stuff. I'm not very liquid right now, but hey, I am rock hard. Cool you're all still here, especially you, Ben. Great band practice last week. We were just talking about how hilariously bad Ben Shapiro is at understanding movies despite being obsessed with movies as a way to win the culture war, and therefore deciding to make movies, including a film called Lady Ballers that we are super going to watch. And judging by the fact that Ben Shapiro seems to hate every good movie and loves every bad movie, it's probably going to be one of those bad movies. And while it's really easy and fun to explain away Ben's pop culture grievances with his very obvious bigotry, because that's what's happening. It's not the only, let's say, challenge he faces. In fact, I actually think the main reason why Ben completely missed the nuance in films like Barbie and Get Out is because Ben just doesn't get nuance and you can really see it in another one of his angry reviews. Remember that really good Nick Offerman episode of The Last of Us, the pretty medium fine show? You know the one. You're probably unsurprised to learn that Ben hated that episode because it features the gays. But in explaining why, Ben accidentally revealed something very embarrassing about himself. Here's the problem with Brokeback Zombie Farm. One, it's a zombie show. There are no zombies. 
in this entire episode. Like none. I understand sim simplistic critique, but there are no zombies in a zombie show. This is worth pointing out. It literally has nothing to do with the plot of the show. So it turns out that Ben has absolutely no idea that The Last of Us isn't about zombies. Yes, zombies are in it, but the story is mainly about how desperately we cling to each other, even in the face of absolute hopelessness. Also acoustic guitars. Lots and lots of acoustic guitars. But mainly, it's about how love makes us do beautiful and brutal things to ourselves and each other, which is exactly what that episode is about. Also, in that episode that's not about zombies or the apocalypse, spoilers for this episode, I guess, one of the characters is caught in a zombie trap, and they're attacked by post-apocalyptic marauders. The setting of zombie apocalypse was still weighing down on the plot the entire time. Do you need to see a zombie every 20 minutes or you'll forget what show you're watching? Are you asking where Poochie is right now? Are you a little fucking stupid baby, Ben? Anyway, my point is, Saying The Last of Us is about zombies is like saying that Starship Troopers is about fighting aliens, which I guarantee Ben also thinks. See, this is a larger thing that's been revealed to us more and more about conservatives and their apparent lack of media literacy. And it's that the same people who keep complaining that modern films are too woke or too political seem to have no idea that the movies they watched as kids were also extremely political. It's as if they've retained the exact childlike understanding they had when they first watched those films. And it's often ridiculous to the point of parody. I bet you think Robocop is political. And did you hear that the obvious civil rights allegory X-Men is woke now? Like, come on guys, are you doing a bit? So of course they think Hollywood has gotten too political if they don't realize that Hollywood was always political. I wanna go back to our pal and my band manager, Jeremy Boring and something he told the New York Times, quote, you could construct my entire worldview if you just listened to 90s country on a loop, threw in every song ever recorded by Don Henley, the CBS miniseries of Lonesome Dove, Braveheart, The Wrath of Khan, and the Lord of the Rings trilogy. It is extremely funny that he would watch a film about a violent revolution or the dangers of eugenics and think, well, now there's the good old non-political films I loved. They're just so obviously clueless about what makes a good movie or a good anything. If you don't believe us, we will be breaking down the film Lady Ballers in the next episode to show you how incredibly bad it is and spoilers, how much the movie absolutely hates women. We actually had so much to say about that film that we had to split it into a separate episode. Sorry, this attempt to create a competing non-woke culture is just so embarrassing and transparent. And as I already said, apparently results in multiple successes. As we said at the start of this, they have a ton of subscribers. That movie Lady Ballers was, according to them, a big hit. But why? Or for that matter, why was Ben Shapiro's rap a hit? Well, it's actually not complicated. And it's ultimately the same reason why Fox News has been the number one watch station for decades. And also why that Sound of Freedom movie did well. It's simple you probably already know it. And it's that since ultra right-wing conservatives have decided that mainstream entertainment and news is bad, they have completely isolated themselves from it. And so of course, the few things they do create get highly popularized. And despite what they say, that's specifically because of the politics. Nobody's gonna be listening to the facts rap a week after its release, but they will make it number one on its first day in order to culturally signify. Going all the way back to Chip Chilla, do you think it's a coincidence that their least political content also gets the worst audience reviews, while all their overtly political stuff is beloved by their fans? And not only does the Daily Wire know this, but they're banking on it. There is a war coming in which all secrets will be revealed. You're alive. Are you? Her name is Snow White. Yes, that is the Daily Wire's extremely bad looking Snow White adaptation, which I'm guessing will be a huge hit with their fans. The trailer features some of the worst green screen imaginable in what appears to be a knockoff version of that gritty one we already did. 
That film was made and announced specifically in response to Disney casting a half Colombian woman in their Snow White adaptation, something that Ben shockingly didn't like. It's Snow White, not Snow Half White, not acceptable to Ben. And going back to how everything they make appears to be some kind of derivative copy of something that already exists, my suspicion is that this is exactly the business model. Because literally everything the Daily Wire has made was not only created specifically out of spite, but proudly sold as that. Our country's in trouble. Conservatives are being canceled by Hollywood, the media, universities, and now Harry's razors. Head over to IHateHarrys.com and pre-order your Founders Series razor and shaving cream set today. Remember that shitty razor ad? That entire product was founded to spite another company. That Snow White movie, the children's programming, it's all specifically marketed as a way to stick it to the woke mob. And I think we need a name for this. I'm gonna call it Grievance Media. Grievia? That sounds like a sugar substitute. We can workshop it and maybe sell anti-woke sugar. It's a bitter fan fiction is the point. And when you realize that's their entire business model, you may also realize that part of that model is also declaring everything that isn't theirs is woke. It's not just the Daily Wire doing it. Elon Musk is in the middle of campaigning against the wokeness of every AI company except for Grok. How convenient that all AI is bad but his. And thanks to the fact that wokeness is just this broad concept for racists to glom onto, you can basically slap the label on anything especially your competitors. Are you a used car salesman? Why not put out an ad saying that all the other salespeople are woke? I guarantee it'll work. Because it's really working for the Daily Wire. They are one of the only media companies that seems to be doing well. And they have this grift down to a science. They have their big quotes, journalism and pundit division declare something is woke. And sure enough, their entertainment branch will put out a non-woke version to sell. Also, it'll star those pundits. It's very obvious and insulting, and perhaps if you've been falling for it so far, you should stop. Because while their claim is that politics is downstream from culture, I actually think their real motive is a lot funnier and sillier than that. Remember how I said that Brett Cooper, upcoming star of Snow White, was an actress before she got hired by The Daily Wire, or how Ben Shapiro originally tried to write TV? Well, they aren't the only ones. That was... Wow. Hey now, that's Michael Knowles doing some gay ass sex scene. You know, the guy who called for the eradication of transgenderism that is also featured in Lady Ballers. And wouldn't you know it, Knowles was a struggling actor. He did a lot of student films and shorts. Oh, he got a walk on in the Nick. Good for him. But of course, what ultimately got his name out there was pandering to the far right and gushing over Ted Cruz. Steven Crowder also tried to be an actor before going into right-wing grifting. Look at that headshot! He was a background extra in the hit Rennie Harlan film, The Covenant. It explains a lot about that guy who just loves to dress up, specifically in drag. Boy, he's really gotta be fuming about that lost role in Lady Ballers. Ah, oh, you should have taken the deal, Steven. You could have been a, well, not a star, but you could have been in Lady Ballers. And then of course, there's our boy, Jeremy Boring. Like those other dips, Boring tried working in the film industry and ultimately failed. He's friends with Zachary Levi, Shazam, and they had a company together literally called Coattails Entertainment. His first movie as a writer was called Spiral and was a flop. He also had acting aspirations during this time and moved to LA specifically to follow that dream of being an actor. But in the end, he would meet Ben Shapiro, also an aspiring writer, and join forces to create The Daily Wire. And in doing so, Boring would have to face a terrifying reality. In our partnership and our friendship, Basically, the assumption was I was the business guy and he was going to be the talent because he'd always wanted to be a director and, and he came to LA to be an actor. And after the interview, he called me up and he said, we have this completely backwards. I'm the business guy and you're the talent. Imagine how uncharismatic you have to be that Ben Shapiro is the talented one. Can we get a clip of the talent at work? Guys, I'm getting paid like 50 bucks to be here. I, I don't care. Oh, way to struggle out that one line, Ben. Yes, that's Ben in Lady Ballers. Yes, Ben is in Lady Ballers. Every right-wing pundit is in this movie because they secretly 
want to be in movies. And all these freaks realize that much like that South Park episode where they become a Christian band, the bar for entertainment is so much lower if you make it specifically for conservatives. Gutfeld in point. Grievance media doesn't have to be very good or funny or memorable because the audience will like it out of spite. It's kind of like if, I don't know, like if a bunch of basketball players pretended to be trans and played women's sports because they thought it was easier to do. To be clear, I don't accept or believe that premise, but that would be an apt metaphor for this thing that I'm describing. Anti-woke products might be the laziest and most effective modern grift right now, and they are objectively bad. And so everything we've talked about brings us to Lady Ballers, a sports comedy written and directed by and starring Jeremy Boring and produced by Ben Shapiro. The culmination of their claims that Hollywood is too woke. This is their big response to that. And more importantly, their big chance to prove that they are actually very good at making movies. Critics disagree, but of course the film does have a 90% audience score on Rotten Tomatoes because to hear them tell it, the professional critics are actually biased leftists, and it's actually a good and funny movie, and people genuinely like it regardless of politics. When you look at a movie like Lady Ballers, and I think Ben Shapiro and Jeremy Boring have said the Daily Wire set out to make a movie that only the Daily Wire can make. When you look at an audience review score of 95%, a lot of people have come out and said, well, that's just because everyone who thinks that men shouldn't play in women's sports went in and voted. Well, it's like, well, one, that should tell you something. And two, even if we got everyone who agrees with like the political or cultural element of it, you could only get up to like 75 or 80%. At some point, it's just, it has to be a good movie if you're, if you're relying on statistics like that. See, if it was 70%, then sure, that's all just political reviews. But higher than that, it must be that the movie is actually good and funny and well-made. In fact, they are so confident of that that they're totally open to any objective review of the film. I'd be interested to read that. I'd actually be interested in someone watching the movie doesn't agree with us mm -hmm. um, and just analyzing it from a creative artistic yeah, standpoint. Sure. And uh, and I'd like to hear what they, I'm not afraid, like I'm not afraid of, I don't think any of us are afraid of feedback and critical feedback. Yeah, I would love that. Good to hear. Hey, I just got an idea. Let's do that. The thing he said. Me do thing. In part two of this video, we're going to review Lady Ballers, the totally non-politically charged comedy that is universally liked by everyone and not just hardcore Daily Wire and conservative fans. That's right, an entire episode about that one film. Aren't you excited? Will it be as bad as their anti-woke razors and chocolate? Will it protect women or maybe say something else? about women. The excitement is too much to bear. Look how excited you are. But you gotta stay tuned and it, 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 it'll be in, in 3D, yeah, but, but yeah, ooh, coming at you. Ah, but not, not like conservative 3D. This will be a special non, non-woke 3D. And to see it, you gotta, you gotta get, you gotta get our, our, our some more news dimension glasses. Just, just, uh, just Venmo. I don't know, like $4,000 to some more news and we'll, we'll, yeah, something will happen. Man, I'm not good at this. Okay, please just give me money, Ben. I know you're still there. All right, give me, give me money, Ben. I, I need my scratchers. Ben, listen, li li listen, listen, th listen, this is a stick up. G give me all your money right now or I'll, I'll, <sighs> Just a couple of bucks. Please. Anyway, to be continued. One dollar. Ben. Wait for band practice. Coming, Ben! Oh, my glasses are broken. Also, my Jeremy's razors are all broken. I didn't buy Jeremy's razors. Why would I do that? Thanks for watching the show. Um, make sure to like and subscribe. That helps us. And leave a comment or don't. It's up to you. Live your life. 
and live your life by liking and subscribing. Check out our podcast called Even More News. You can check out this show as a podcast, Some More News. We've got a patreon.com slash some more news. We've also got a merch store with things on other things. So that's all... That's all. That's all.